They're appointed by the court to take care of what are considered vulnerable people, but an ongoing I-Team investigation is raising some questions about what are called professional guardians. I-Team investigator Adam Walser has been looking into the complaints, and he joins us now with what's, what he's considered about, what he's discovered about the program and about one Bay Area politician. Adam? Well, Wendy, guardians are allowed to make decisions for people who are no longer able to make decisions for themselves. Those people are called wards, and they've been stripped of all their rights. While their guardians are allowed to make the decisions about their health care and their money. Tonight, we look at Patricia Johnson, a Pinellas Park City Councilwoman and a local guardian who some say is abusing her power as a guardian. She went shopping at thrift stores, <laughs> met friends for lunch, and spent dozens of hours at her feed store and at home. That's what we discovered when the I-Team followed Patricia Johnson for five straight days. But only once for approximately 20 minutes did we see Johnson go to an assisted living facility, probably to check on one of her 50 incapacitated wards. That's not surprising to some of their family members. When you walk into the nursing home, they're like, we never see her, we never get a hold of her, she's very hard to reach. Does she come and visit your mom much in the home? Um, my mother says no. But then when I ask the, the staff there, they say never. These bills from Johnson's ward's files indicate she's working hard. Under Florida law, Johnson is allowed to use her ward's own money to pay herself $70 an hour for things like banking, opening mail, and paying visits. Her bills can only be submitted twice a year for each ward and have to be approved by a judge. The I-Team spent two weeks pulling hundreds of Johnson's bills from court files and putting them into a spreadsheet. We discovered from January 1st, 2010 until December 31st, 2012, Johnson billed her wards more than $260,000, more than $87,000 a year. We first tried to talk to Johnson about her guardianships at a conference in September. I took an oath, you know, 27 years ago that I would not discuss my patients or my clients. Johnson also earned $17,000 a year as a member of the Pinellas Park City Council. Two other council members who both endorsed Johnson, Ed Taylor of Taylor Family Funeral Home and realtor Richard Butler, appear to be profiting from Johnson's wards. It's not what's in the best interest of the ward. It's what's in the best interest of, the, of each of their pockets. Amy Eldridge's grandmother Rita was taken straight to Taylor Funeral Home when she died last year. One of at least six wards records show Johnson arranged to go there. That's not my choice of where she was, would, would have gone. She would have gone to the same place my grandfather went. We caught up with Taylor at a recent city council meeting. Do you think that uh, she should tell everybody that, that she uses you as her primary funeral home, that she uses Rick as her I, primary I, realtor? I don't know who she uses. She does use me some, but I have no idea who other else she uses. When Rita Aldridge was incapacitated in 2008, Johnson used Richard Butler to sell her home to an investor for $84,000. The I-Team discovered it was resold the same day for a $7,000 profit. That home had been appraised for nearly $180,000 months earlier. I don't understand how you can take an appraisal that's done by a third party that has no interest in it and then by a party that does have an interest in it and go based on that appraisal to lower the value of the home. Court records show that during the past three years, Johnson submitted no certified appraisals when asking the court to approve sales. But each of Butler's contracts included higher than customary 7% sales commissions. Since 2010, Richard Butler has sold 14 of Johnson's ward's homes for more than one and a quarter million dollars. Documents show that in September, Butler listed and placed the house of one of Johnson's wards under contract three days before the judge signed the order to incapacitate her. We discovered multiple properties sold the day they were listed, and several were flipped within months for large profits. Every one of the wards, every type of transaction we do is reviewed by the courts and signed off by a judge. Shouldn't there be appraisals, certified appraisals on every one of those? I would not say there shouldn't be, but I would not say that it should be. In some cases, real estate is very easy to ascertain what property values are. The judge should be questioning it, and the clerk's office should be questioning it. Robert Melton is the former chief auditor for the Pinellas County Clerk and is a vocal critic of Florida's guardianship program. But if you look at several sales by the same guardian and you find a pattern, that I find inexcusable. That should be a rare event because the guardian is responsible for planning 
the assets and the sales of assets of the ward to make sure that the needs are provided for. We called Patricia Johnson, emailed her, and sent her a letter asking her to do a sit-down interview before we tried to speak to her after a city council meeting. We just want to talk to you about your practices as a guardian. We want to talk to you about your billing and giving all this business to your fellow council members. She's been doing it for so long and has so many people that she's worked with and has built rapports with and relationships with that it's not being looked at and not being monitored. Well, I want you to talk to us about this, Patricia. You can discover more about our investigation by logging on to abcactionnews.com slash guardians. There you'll find interviews with Ward's loved ones as well as information from experts, including a probate judge and the president of the Pinellas County Guardian Association. I'm I-Team Investigator Adam Walser, taking action for you.